Good morning, brothers and sisters, especially my family that's here with me this morning as we start the teaching. But the theme is, again, a morning prayer, a cry of the godly in the, 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 the great trouble. And, and there's enough trouble every day. You know, the Bible says there's enough in the evil of a day. And don't worry about the next day. Get through one day at a time. And Psalm 5 is included in this section, which forms a stairway between the messianic psalms. This group of psalms uh, from chapter 3 to chapter 7 actually tells a story that are, first of all, a picture of a personal experience that David was having. And, you know, when I study this stuff, it's always good. And God always gives me a different direction to talk about this sometimes. And it's because we need to learn, we need to be taught. And in good commentaries, there's always a multitude of counselors. I I was listening to a teaching that I sent, I sent to Kenny last night on uh, the Trinity that really touched my heart. And, you know, these that brother's gone that gave that teaching, and that just shows you how God uses different brothers. And, you know, and I, I, I listen to a lot of brothers that are not necessarily moving in the healing gifts or the, the miracle ministry of deliverance, but that doesn't mean these teachers and these men don't love God. And, and, it's been a great aid for me over the years to study Scripture. And David was, secondly, being revealed prophetically the picture of Israel and the Great Tribulation. And, and they were very real applications for all of us today when we study the Psalms real time right now. And like I said, from three to seven. So everything I'm commenting out of commentary this morning, you can see it all in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh uh, chapters of Psalms. And that's an important thing so that our hearts unite with the Word of God here, because it's real time for us today to be like David, a man after God's own heart, was like back then. And see, that's, that's the confirmation in Scripture, and it gives us a heart for our faith to grow the way David's faith became. And this psalm was written by David, and it has an inscription to the chief musician, musician upon Nelia. Psalm 4 was uh, Nejaganath and the stringed instrument. Today, the description is more like, you know, you ever see Ron Canoli and them, they play the flutes and everything else. Well, David was a fan of music. And you can't, you can't put, throughout the Bible, making a joyful noise and everything, it's very important and that uh, and flutes were used too and 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 timbrels and the stringed instruments the harps and and when i was studying the preempt of these chapters it is a prayer of faith sent up from the heart in which the discernment of god as the shield and rewarder of them who diligently seek him and i teach this a lot and that's what these Psalms are going to teach us, brothers and sisters. You know, it's actually like when you're reading a Psalm, it could become your prayer of faith. And it's found in union with very deep sense of the prevailing of what was going on back then, the evil, the ungodliness. Remember, David was fleeing all the time because he didn't want to get killed. You know, and, and fear is a real thing. Even today, when you look at the craziness that's going on all over the world, and 
some of the latter times are going to be rumors of wars, wars, stuff's going to be going on just like it was in the time of David, brothers and sisters. There's a deep sense of the prevailing evil and ungodliness, the temptation of all the people that are faithful, vexing of soul because of the abundance of iniquity. Its, le its leading feature is a general expressed uh, pridum that makes it a very interesting statement here. And I had to read this because I read it this morning and I said, you know what, Lord, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to open up with this. And I, I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that we tune into the word today. Because it's a it was so powerful for me that I have the whole chapter highlighted. And, and it wasn't done today. It was done at another time. You know, because every now and then I get into my books and my Psalms and my Proverbs, and there's stuff that just lights me up because I become one in the Spirit with the Word of God. I believe everything that God is saying, and when I see something that really touches me, I get my pen out, I write, preach it, uh, I highlight sometimes the whole chapter. That means I got to spend some time expounding in it. Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. How about that? You know, I'm going to put that down right now and, and pray that we get blessed just by the word itself right now today, and I'll go back to commentary later. But Father, move throughout this little flock this morning. You know, I, I already said the first verse, but I'm going to repeat it, Psalm 5, for those that are coming in listening on the internet, give ear to my words. God's talking to all of us. Oh, Lord, consider my meditation. Now, come on, brothers and sisters. He rewards those that diligently seek him. I said that in the, the prelude a few minutes ago, and it's recorded. Hearken unto the voice of my crying, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. I've seen so much craziness lately. Christians calling out other Christians because people are bowing to human beings like they're some kind of demigod. And David's simply teaching us here how to pray. And he's saying, hearken to the voice of my cry, my king and my God. Make sure that you have that relationship going on with your Savior. Remember, he died for you. you. You don't belong to you anymore. You belong to the one that died for you. And don't, don't get upset about it. He's the creator. All things were created by him and for him. We're sitting at his feet today because he loves us. He wants us to understand his will and his mercy that's new to all of us every morning verse 3 this morning, he says, my voice shall thou hear in the morning. You know, God knew before he created all of us that we were going to be gathered here in the morning. And what are we doing? We're listening to the, the word that became flesh. That's how simple it is when you get into the particulars of all scriptures for teaching, correcting, and training us in righteousness, brothers and sisters. Once again, verse 3, I'm going to say it over again so you get it. My voice shall thou hear in the morning. Oh, Lord. Now, he's. that's why you have to pray every day. That's why when you get up in the morning, even if you just say, thank you, Lord, let your will be done in my life, that's a sharp prayer. You're asking God and the Holy Spirit to keep you tuned in and tuned up, memory recall to what you read and study and meditate on in the Word of God. And it says here, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee. Okay, we know the New Testament, uh, I am the truth, the way, and the life. We go to the Father 
And we ask in the name of Jesus, because we wouldn't have that privilege if God himself didn't come down and nail it to the cross, the handwriting that was brought down upon all of us from the beginning of creation when Adam and Eve sinned. And it wasn't just Eve. Adam sinned too. I mean, you go back and you read it all and you say, man, they were with God. He perfectly made them. And then they disobeyed God. Same, same thing Lucifer did up in heaven. He wanted the worship. And there's no glory for man. You know, I say it over and over again. For thou art not a God that had pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. So right there, we all know good and bad. The Word of God teaches us to do His will, to say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, to follow the Scripture, to come into obedience and become a doer of God's uh, language, what His will is for all of us to be and do and to love and forgive and don't esteem one above another. I mean, there's so much in Scripture, so much in Psalms, so much that David went through that it's the Word of God that we all need to hear and receive this morning. Why? Because he says, no, neither shall evil dwell with thee. He even gives us a way out. He doesn't give us a temptation that we can't get out of, and the enemy is only tempting and enticing. He even gives us a way to kick him out. That's why I'm not on that page where you can do something about the evil that dwells within yourself, and that's to resist the devil. But what's what he says here in verse 5? He calls the people that are not listening foolish. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. And that's David confessing this to God. Why? Because David was a sinner, and he realizes his sin. Well, that's the way we should be when we read the Word of God. Godly sorrow brings repentance. It says, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Hatest means to despise. David's talking one-on-one -on -one with God. And he's telling them, you hate all iniquity. You know, that's why holiness is of the Lord. Obedience to God's word is very important, and you'll know them by their fruit. And it's okay for us to love unconditionally and correct brothers and sisters when they're walking contrary to the word of God. We iron sharpens iron. We all need that love from one another. Man, I get it all the time. You know, don't, don't reprove God's love and correction. Learn to be teachable. Learn sometimes that you don't see how the enemy operates in every one of us. And God can take even a donkey like he did with Balaam. And when I read this stuff, it really touches my heart because it's not a long read this morning. It says, thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. And we know what leasing is. It's falsehood, brothers and sisters. I brought that up yesterday. It's repeating itself. That's why these three, four, five, six, seven go together. Once you study into this, you'll get a deeper understanding of our relationship with our Creator. That's why it's important. He says he's going to destroy those that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into the house in the multitude of thy mercy. And in thy fear, reverence, brothers and sisters, will I worship toward thy holy temple. You know, not only is it poetic, but it's real time. You know, that happened this morning. I picked some songs that were real, real 
one-on-one -on -one worship songs to our creator and what Jesus Christ did for all of us. And they were all different kinds. I took a hymn. I took a contemporary song. You'll notice that I'm starting to put little groups together. I rearrange daily the music so it's not the same repetitious music over and over again. You know, his mercy's new every morning. We got a God that loves to be worshiped. Sometimes when you're really following the word of God, that's that's high worship, people. You can make like, like I heard Ernie say, listen to that song Ryan wrote. Well, that song is touching people that you and I cannot touch. He wrote that song to show people, the, the people he left in life, to show them that there's new life with the creator. And that's how you got to reach people sometimes, brothers and sisters. And I can write sermons on some of the stuff God is showing me and teaching me in the book. You know, you look at verse 7 today, because I think I said there was 12 verses this morning in this chapter, and I got every one of them highlighted. Oh, Excuse me, one of them I don't, because that's it was so profound. Verse 7 is highlighted. But as for me, I will come unto the house in the multitude of thy mercy. Well, the only way we can come before God is because of his grace and mercy, people. Remember, he died and saved you. It's not by works. We do the works because we want to trust and obey God, as that hymn said. And in the fear, that's the reverence of wanting to do what God tells us to do. He's, and so when you're being obedient to God, when you're doing your alms, when you're praying for other people, when you're fasting for other people, that's big-time worship. Coming into obedience to the living word of God is probably one of the highest forms of worship that we could do. That's why we come into his courts with praise and thanksgiving. You know, there's nothing to argue about here. You know, you just sit there and meditate on what God is talking about. When we're doing God's will, it's pleasing to his eyes, his ears. And he says, I love you because you believe. And David here, as he was praying this to God, he said, lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of my enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Okay. He gave it up totally to God. And that's what we have to do, you know. I surrender all. I get very spiritual in my heart when I sing some of these worship songs, because apart from God, you can't, you can't worship him without his grace and mercy. You have to believe what God did with you as the finale, so that you could walk with him, you could talk to him. He died and blotted out the handwriting on the wall that we would have a relationship with him, brothers and sisters. Not that you put him in the back seat and leave him there, and you pick and choose when you're going to talk to him. He's a very personal God. God's a spirit. We're a little bit different, people. And we he gives us the ability to make a decision on whose report we're going to believe. Eight was the one I didn't highlight. So the Lord had to correct me because I said I highlighted the whole thing. Just looks that way when I glance at my Bible. But nine, listen to what he says here. David speaking for the, there's no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open grave. King James says, sepulchre. 
they flatter with their tongue. Sometimes we talk too much, all of us. That's why I'm trying to learn to speak more of Jesus to people. Because my opinion really don't matter. God's word really matters for all of us. David's saying, destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions. We know what that means, disobedience, sin. For they have what? Rebelled against state. So you deserve what you reap. You know, what you reap with your sin nature, there's a consequence. I can understand more and more because the word of God is God's word. Even if you didn't get saved till later on in life, you got saved. But there's a consequence for living against the word of God. And it can go, I, I've come across it in deliverance from the bloodline curses. The medical field has seen that if your great, great grandparents, you know, I'm, I'm the victim of a bloodline curse. My great-great-grandmother died young, filled up with fluid, and her heart was enlarged. So that's something that somewhere in the family line, had I known better when I was younger, if I had somebody that was biblical in my life, that's when you can really start to bind and lose, pray and fast. And, and understand there is a consequence for sin. But Jesus is the answer for freedom and eternal life. You know, you're going to die one time. We all are. It's been appointed by God. But because of faith in Christ, you get eternal life. God was merciful because he knew there was an enemy operating in his creation something that God himself created. You talk about unconditional love. For us to even have the book, to read the book, and the Holy Spirit gives us that understanding and we can fall in love with Jesus Christ as our Savior. I, I really fear the Lord. I, I spoke to a person about that last night. If this is all I do, this is all I do. Speak Jesus every day of my life and praise him because he died for us. And that's where David, he got so far in with all this. His whole life changed radically. As you read the Psalms, your life is going to begin to change. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Then you start to do the things that God says to do in this book. I don't make no quack about it. You know, when I got saved, I was told, read Psalms, Proverbs, and the New Testament. I didn't stop crying for a year. People thought I was crazy. I was just a sinner saved by grace. Verse 11 and 12 today. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Don't be ignorant, brothers and sisters. David was a man after God's own heart, and he was talking to God here, and he said to God, but let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. So I, I tell everybody, listen right now, if you haven't put your trust in Jesus Christ, the word that became flesh, make no mistake. Take the leap of faith. I know you don't know who God is, just jump in. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, teach me your ways. That's all I ever did. Who would think I would be casting out demons, healing the sick, doing all these things that I was clueless to prior to reading the Bible? I wasn't educated. I didn't go to college. You know, that shows you what God can do with anybody. He could take a nobody and make them somebody. He could become a demon slayer. If you can learn to 
pray and fast and trust God, you can move mountains in your life and in other people's lives. Because the fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. But listen to what he says here. Again, verse 11. But let all those that put their trust in thee, in God, rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. That's why we can sing some of these beautiful songs. Because we're, we're putting our, our joy, our praise unto his name. You know, that new song I've been playing, King Jesus. I'm in love with the song because Jesus loves me. Thou defendest them, David saying, because the, the good Lord up above, the battle belongs to the Lord. Scripture says, he says, I will defend thee, don't worry. Well, when you have eternal life, the Holy Spirit says, you're mine. When you echo and meditate on, I will never leave you or forsake you. Whosoever acknowledges me before man, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. What is that telling your heart? You're a sinner. But because you're putting your faith in Jesus Christ, it's what he did. That's the real part of the gospel that the church is today. In the 19th and 20th century, are trying to turn it back to a works religion, and that's religious spirits. And, and a lot of people are being deceived today, brothers and sisters, but there's going to be a remnant. The gates of hell will not prevail against the body of Christ. And who are those peculiar people? They're the ones that are reading the book and paying attention to what the Lord tells us to do. For thou, Lord, verse 12, will bless the righteous. Well, are you not righteous, brothers and sisters? If God didn't love you, you wouldn't have got to the ministry of salvation because we're, we're just sinners that believe in the book. With other sinners that believe in the book. And God commands us to forgive and love one another. And if we're not doing that, we're not following what God tells us to do. You want to get beat up by the demons? You get to make the choice who you're going to listen to, what you're going to do. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, verse 12 says. Will thou compass him as with a shield? That means God's got us. Regardless to what your little brain thinks, when you make that commitment and ask the creator who created everything to save you, he did it. And all you got to do is believe even in his name, Scripture says. Because he's going to work it out. When we become like David and we ask God to teach us his words, well, I've been opening my Bible now for 38 years, and I'm still being taught. You know, little different translations, you know. Thou hatest all workings of iniquity. Listen, for God, for no God art thou whom wickedness can please. The evil man cannot dwell with thee. The arrogant shall not dare to stand before thy eyes, because people don't want to hear about God. And th those are arrogant people that are controlled by the devil, but we, that doesn't mean we can't bind and loose and pray for them and ask God to bombard them, you know, plant the seed, and ask God to send laborers. That will destroy them that speak lies. The man of blood and deceit, God, Jehovah, abhorreth. In other words, God can't stomach them. The great mercy, and because of great mercy, we can enter into the house. 
And some of us fall down facing the holy temple because God's omnipresent. Don't kid yourself. When I make mistakes, I cry to God. Why? Because I should know better. Why? Because I do read the Word of God. And sometimes I get out of the box and I need God to comfort me. And sometimes I got to say, Lord, forgive me. You know, it's something when you're disobedient to God's word, you become sick at the heart. What is the comfort of the godly in days like we're living in today? The hatred he has in his heart for evil reveals that he's on God's side. We see it all the time when we watch the news. How many people in our world today really are not saved? Social media, educational system, all the things we pray against every day. We're crying out because we don't want God to destroy them the way he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. That's why the fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. God is light, and in him there's no darkness at all. That's out of 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. I taught that off the pulpit. Habakkuk said it was when the Lord told him the Chaldeans were going to invade God's land, thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil. And because we believe the word of God, it's hard for us to enter into the iniquity without godly sorrow and the Holy Spirit bringing a conviction. And when we're supposed to know better, you know, like I said, I prayed with someone yesterday and God showed up only because you got to believe that you got to be instant and ready and you got to be led by the Holy Spirit. There's too many name it and claim it people in the body of Christ. And then if they don't get an answered prayer, they blame it on the poor person that's being tormented. God's made it very, very clear in these scriptures today, there's a day of judgment coming, and evil is not going to prevail. One example in the commentary today was the book of Revelation 21.8, which says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all the liars, very clear in commentary today, shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone in the second death. Man, I don't want to see anybody go to the lake of fire. Because once I was like everybody, but today I'm different. I speak Jesus every day of my life. And that's all God wants is for us to get on that gospel train to be that ambassador, to be the light in darkness. We don't have an excuse. It's so dark out here right now. It's dark everywhere. And all we have to lean on is God's written word. You know, we've been given a name. We were blessed with the righteousness, with the favor, with him with his shield around us. Prayer is man's resource and recourse when he looks at the sickness that's all about him. He prays for that guidance, which will enable him to walk in a way and will not bring disrepute upon the name of God. I mean, it, the verbiage, when I was reading this this morning, why? Because Isaiah prayed that way back in 64, 1 and 2, when he said, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou would have come down, that the mountains might flow down at the presence, as when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the waters to boil. And I watched my wife make chicken soup for us because she's been having a little bit of a throat and still coughing. And, you know, please pray for Sharon and pray for all, all the brothers and sisters that are coming down with this kind of an upper respiratory that lasts more than a month, you know. We need God 
to move in the spirit right now for all the brothers and sisters, even the ones that are not saved, because we pray for the salvation of souls every day, people. Judgment must fall someday upon all the sinners. Scripture makes it very clear that God will take vengeance. You know, we quote that to everybody, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. But it's not for the saved. It's for the people that reject God. And, and God's going to have vengeance on the unbelievers. That's why it's so important to use all the spiritual weapons that God provides. Just, just in the fact that we can be a house of prayer, just praying for salvation every day for people. We have that extra bonus because we all know about deliverance, but that doesn't mean everybody that knows about it is really doing deliverance. For a Christian to pray these kind of prayers during the days, uh, sometimes I say that regardless of how we feel about who we're praying for, we still have to forgive them. And that's a hard thing because some of us grew up with pride, and pride's been part of our lives for so many years. There are many people who want to get rid of a portion today of God's Word. There are even people who say this is not even God's Word today. I can't tell you how many times I've seen it in commentary. I've seen it in brothers and sisters blatantly not believing the Word of God, believing what they want to believe. And what this brought to my heart today as I was reading commentary, there are, are people who say this is not even God's Word. There's a going to be for God's people the great tribulation. You hear what I'm saying? This is coming from commentary. This isn't coming from a person that believes in pre-trib. This is going to be for God's people during the Great Tribulation in that day. These people under law will pray this kind of prayer as they did in the past under the law. In other words, when it gets really bad out here, it's going to be like back in the time of King David, and the enemies were everywhere, and God's people were there. You know, God intends to bring vengeance upon the enemies of God's people. So we are to do things differently. Matthew, and, you know, and I, I know the Scripture, you know the Scripture, and that's why I chose to read this to everybody today, so others can hear. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. When I was ministering to the person last night, not only did I speak Matthew 6, but I also went back and spoke Matthew 5. And it was ironic early this morning, because this is what 544 in Matthew says, brothers and sisters. It says, I say unto you, Jesus speaking, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. This is a difficult thing to do, but I will grant that. But that is what the Lord asks all of us to do. In Romans 12, 19, we are told, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. God says that he will take care of any reprisals. When we get hit in the nose, it is a human nature, because I'm tell you, prior to Christ, I got smacked one day coming off a school bus, and I just wanted to rip the poor guy up. And I, I got so wild and insane about it, 
they had to throw me in a car and take me to the police station. And here I am today. Whose report am I going to believe? Whose report are you going to believe? When we know that to be absent from the body is present before the Lord. And we all are going to die, so don't fear death. Because death to us as believers is our coming home part. So to speak, brothers and sisters, and that's what you always got to meditate on. You know, the word of God, we are not walking with him by faith. God wants us to trust him to take care of our enemies. We don't have to do anything. We need to pray for them. Remember, Paul was a Pharisee. He was imprisoning and killing Christians in the New Testament. God, God saved him. God forgave him. God can do the same thing for anybody. Look at ourselves in the mirror. When the Lord Jesus Christ was here on earth and was brutally treated, he didn't strike back. He wants those who are his own in the church today to take that same position. But God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. God intends to take care of it someday. So we got to pray for people, leave them in God's hands. Doesn't mean you got to be best friends with people that are constantly attacking one another. Just get out of it. Avoid the arguments. Avoid the crazy debates. People like to argue over every scripture. And in salvation, there's no argument. You're either saved or you're not. You either put your faith in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to go to one more commentary because this is a wonderful, marvelous psalm. And what a comfort it'll be for all of us in the time of severe persecutions. And, and don't think they don't know who are Christians. Don't think that they don't know every prayer group that's on the internet because you're being deceived if you don't think we're in a time where technology knows everything we're doing, every cell phone call. Here, just the little 15-year-old girl the other day just saying that you're, you're teaching the little children wrong, and she mentioned homosexuals, transgenders, and because I put it up there, I got a warning. Don't think they're they're setting this whole thing up to control. It's all part of the one world system, people. And we're going to see a lot of it going on. All we're doing is asking God for a delay. So let me let me go to uh, the Thomas Nelson. It's quick. When he served, and I, I, I spoke about this in the beginning, when he served King Saul's court, David was often attacked by some of Saul's officers who flattered the king. Well, that's what people do in Christianity. They have their cliques. They agree on things that is really kind of dumb and not focusing on the whole word of God. Most people go to church. They don't even know the Bible. Okay. There's not a lot of peculiar people that are digging into the word of God daily in their lives. And in David was crying out to God here, King Saul actually believed that David was trying to steal his throne. And we know better from studying the word of God. He even ran and hid from David he, because he, David was, David knew Saul was appointed king and he didn't want to go against anything God had appointed. And, and look at this. If we follow David's example and pray about the matter, listen to this psalm closely today. David began the day with his heart lifted up to God. Well, that's what we try to do here in the prayer group. I've been doing this for a lot of years. I think I'm three days from our anniversary. You know, when I really, I, 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 
it doesn't matter when I started it. It's just like everything else. I, I just randomly picked a date. It was right after a conference at Hegwish. God knows the sinful words of all the liars. Some of you that know me well enough, that's a particular voice in my home right now about Christians that are lying. They're not only lying to each other, but they're lying to God. And that's sad. Okay. You know? The sinful words of liars, because it's what comes out of our mouths to file us. But he also heard the believing prayers of his servant. David had to be careful because Saul and his leaders were watching him. Oh, we got a lot of people watching us all the time. And his life was in danger. But he worshiped God and asked God for daily direction. I got up this morning and was asking God, how do I present this chapter today? And I started studying, and that's what I'm doing. I'm presenting it the way God showed me to present it. I looked at different commentaries. The beginning, I felt, was very important. That's the way I did it today. David did not fight Saul or Saul's men. He left the battles for the Lord. David put his trust in God that God would take care of his enemies. And God did not fail. You go back and you read your Bible, people. See, a lot of things that David is doing in the Psalms is a reaction to his prayer life and everything he went through. It's the same for you and I. Protection is the last thing named in verse 12, the closing. Beyond that, David was blessed with joy, confidence. And what happens when you read the Psalms and you read Proverbs, and when you're constantly reading the Word of God? You get comfort, you get peace, you get a deeper love. You're falling in love with Jesus, the Word of God. You tend to pay attention more to the Word of God than you used to. The more you meditate on the Word and open the Bible, when you got nothing to do, or, and it's what, very important to read the Word or hear the Word at night. I can't tell you the benefits. You'll see it. If you put the Word into action in your own life, the benefits outweigh the, the downfalls, trust me, because you're being, you're your personality is going to be more uppity. You're going to be happy. Why? Because you know your name's written in the Lamb's book. Second of all, you get answered prayer. I mean, all you out there listening, take the leap of faith today. If you haven't surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, you got all to gain, nothing to lose because he really does supply our needs. Every good gift comes from above. He even, there's so many testimonies of people getting really good jobs and stuff, especially when you're in with brothers and sisters and everybody is loving one another, praying for one another that God's will is going to be done in our lives. And in times of suffering can be a time of growing if we the if we allow the Lord to have his way in us. In other words, conform to the written word of God. So thank you guys for listening to my little sermonette this morning on chapter 5 of Psalms. And God bless you for being here.